Good morning, everyone. I hope everybody is having a wonderful day. I'm feeling some better today. Thank you for the ones who have prayed for me. And thank you to everyone that has given a comment. I haven't got back to everyone on the comments, but I hope to do uh, so real soon. Uh, but today I thought I would do another video on the Rose of Sharon and how to grow one for the tip of Tuesday, Tuesday Tips. And then I'm going to have a devotional also. But uh, to begin with, I saw this morning when I first got up about how beautiful my Rose of Sharon's have bloomed out this morning and I just went out and I cut a few let me see if I've got it on camera here's the white one and you can see what a beautiful blossom it's turning into be it's just now opening up this is white with the dark fuchsia or red center I'd say it's more of a dark fuchsia center and you can see all the buds it's got on it too. Well, I just cut it off just a little bit, kind of at an angle, and pull most of the leaves off. Here is the other one that I got in. I thought this would make a beautiful bouquet um, in my home, along with rooting them at the same time. This one is a pink, pale pink, with a hot pink center and I left one of the leaves on it and the only reason I left one is because the others uh, did not look their healthiest and here's the buds I even think they're beautiful as buds and I pull the rest of the leaves off as you can see and I just stuck this one in in the water I didn't even really clean up the edges on that but I probably will after I make this video but I wanted to show y'all uh, these again because when I first made a video about the Rose and Sharon it was at the beginning of my channel and I done it real quick there were tons of mosquitoes out there it was at dusk almost and uh, that's when a lot of mosquitoes come out and I was just done it real fast and I really wasn't focusing uh, as much on growing and rooting the Rose of Sharon as I should because of those mosquitoes so I thought I would redo it uh, a better make a better video and I'm wanting to make my channel a lot better I want it to be better quality and um, I just been doing it, you know, just on the cuff or on the fly, they call it, they say. Uh, just doing something that popped in my mind or something I wanted to say. But I do want to add more information about uh, things and topics I'm talking about. Because I want to do this, uh, have this video, YouTube channel, so that it will give helpful information to a lot of people but um, first of all I'm going to talk about how to um, grow the Rose of Sharon and how you grow them is just go like I did if someone has got a um, bush of the Rose of Sharon at their home just ask them can you have a couple of pieces if it's a real healthy bush make sure it's real healthy because sometimes the japanese beetles wants to get on those uh, rosa sharons which i will address the uh, japanese beetles sometime hopefully in the future but just get you some limbs get you you know three or four cut them off pull the leaves off most of them, you can leave one if you want to, to make the bouquet make uh, even prettier. And put them in water and leave them one to two months. You can also dip them in rooting hormone, but I don't have any rooting hormone. 
and if you don't have rooting hormone you can dip them in raw honey and put them in the water or you can dip them in raw honey or rooting hormone and put them in moist potting soil and put them in a place that you know is warm but not real real hot partial shade or bring them in the house like I did this bouquet and I'm gonna root mine in the house and in one to two months you should have some roots they do, do they do take longer to root than uh, a lot of other plants but also they love once they are rooted plant them in full sun let me get them out while I'm talking about them more so you can be looking at those uh, plant them in full sun to part shade in moist to well drained soil and they do good in most any kind of soil really they're drought tolerant they bloom in early summer and they come back every year with more blooms the longer you have them the more blooms they have um, I don't know which one I like the best, probably this pink with the red, but I also love the white uh, with the uh, red also. But they're beautiful. They come in uh, pink, white, and lavender. I don't have, uh, this one I thought was lavender, but it's more of a pink. Uh, I don't have uh, one of the lavender ones, but... Um, when you do get ready to set it out, like I said, put it in um, a place that gets full sun to light shade. It loves moist dirt, but it doesn't like um, to stay in just wet soil all the time. It has to be well drained to have it grow good, but it also uh, does well in uh, drought tolerant hot summer heat and when you do set them out after they root um, it's best to set them out where you want them in your yard or in a pot in the spring or fall that way the conditions of the climate is not too harsh on the plants and they'll have excuse me they'll have a better chance of living um, I talked about how to root these uh, and how to grow and now I'm going to do a daily devotional that I said I was going to start doing that I felt led uh, by the Lord to do and include in my videos. I've rededicated my life to the Lord. I've been a Christian since I was 11 but I've rededicated my heart to the Lord to be more obedient to Him. And I have just dove into the Bible more and reading the Bible more. And every morning when I get up and drinking my cup of coffee, I like to read my Bible, just flip through it. And wherever it falls, that's the passage I read. Well, today I was thinking about the Rose of Sharon and giving more information on it. And... I wondered if everybody knew that Rose of Sharon is in the Bible. I know some people know and some people don't. But I thought I would share where it is and it talks about the Rose of Sharon. And it's found in the Psalm, Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 1. I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys and that is talking about the good Lord himself the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the rose of Sharon he's also the bright morning star and the first and the last but let me just show you another one where it talks about a rose in the Bible if I can get it here this is in Isaiah 
here. It's uh, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 35. And you see, I can, I've made notes in a script because I want to make a lot better um, videos than I have in the past. Because um, before I didn't have that much time to really concentrate on making extremely good quality uh, videos. But now, you know, I have more time. And it says, The wilderness... And the solitary place shall be glad for them. And the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. Well, it's talking about a rose, but it's talking about, I'm pretty sure, the rose of Sharon in this passage. But the Psalm of Solomon, like I said, I'll show it again to you all. The actual verse where it talks about the Rose of Sharon. And I have it marked. Let's see if I can get my camera to focus. This is Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 1. I will read it again. I am the Rose of Sharon and the lilies of the valley. Now, I used to have some lilies of the valley, but they didn't do too well, but that's when I was first um, becoming a gardener and really starting to enjoy it more. So I may get some lily of the valleys later on. But today, I thought I would focus on the Rose of Sharon. And the Rose of Sharon, if we'll put the Lord first in our lives, like I told many here lately, that since I have, I have overcome fear that I have. Fear and anxiety. I don't know why, but I think it all started back when I was in the 8th grade. Um, I loved school on up until then. And in 8th grade, I was bullied by this girl. And from then on, I really lost a lot of interest in school because I was afraid I was going to get beat up every day um, because I had seen her beat up other people. But it made a profound effect on me. And I just didn't focus on um, anything as much um, I always had uh, anxiety, dealt with that, and depression, like I talked about in another video. Um, but the more I thought about it, that is when I really remember starting to have anxiety and fear in my life. But I hope this helps people uh, listening. But since I have rededicated my life to the Lord and I'm going to be more obedient Christian, that fear has really left me and I don't fear as much anxiety at all and just like the song says <clears throat> I don't know if you all know this song or not but there's a song that I love and it's it's called because he lives I can face tomorrow and it, it starts out because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives, all fear is gone. That is not the, the right, correct tune or harmony because I was afraid. See, I'm saying afraid. I was uh, kind of afraid. I take that back that I was going to sound terrible. But it goes like this. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives. All fear is gone. I love that song. And the, most of the fear has left me. The fear of putting videos like this on YouTube. I figured I'd get a backlash of people that, that didn't like those uh, devotionals or, or tying in plants 
and other things to what is taught in the Bible. I love the King James Version of the Bible. Like I said, this is my mom's Bible. And she always loved the King James Version as well. Um, but I thought about also, since fear, most of the time fear is gone, and during this coronavirus, I know we're having a lot of fear in our lives. But um, what I also wanted to say was, you know what matters most in life is put the Lord first in your life, and He will direct your path. Even though I feel like I haven't been worthy of really talking about things like this, I realize that everyone is worthy, no matter what you've done in your life. Just ask the Lord to forgive you, and He will forgive you, and you're worthy to talk about the Lord. Um, I found out during this COVID-19 period that the most important things in life is, number one, put the Lord first in your life, and He will direct your path. Also, having good health, having good family and friends around you that build you up and don't tear you down and the simple things are the little things and I've shown this before this little candle right here that I got at actually at Family Dollar several years ago and it says enjoy the little things and that is so true also this little flower pot I thought would be so cute and a simple idea to get children uh, interested in uh, growing plants and things and this is actually in grow grass and I got this at CVS for $2.99 uh, probably five years ago or more I just haven't had a chance to really talk about it or use it but I'm gonna see if the seeds are still good I hope they are um, but that would be a great way to get them involved and uh, I hope this video has helped you all and has encouraged you all because for a person to grow or, a, or flowers to grow, first of all, you have got to have a good foundation. And the foundation is, of course, for flowers and plants, soil. You've got to have water so they'll stay healthy.